Hi, everybody. This is Patty Negri. Welcome to the Witching Hour. I have not one, but two great guests for you today. I have Jason and Estrella from the new book, Modern Witchcraft of the Greek Gods. So it's going to be fabulous. One of my favorite subjects. But before I bring them on, where's Patty? That's right. Where's Patty? Because I have to look it up so I know. Otherwise, I wake up and I have no idea. Um, I'm home. I am home. My puppy is so happy that I'm home. My kitten cares a little bit. Um, but if you are listening to this the week of Monday, December 12th. Yes, we are almost halfway through the month. When we first drop, I am home. I am here for the holidays. I'm here actually through all of January, more than likely. Um, so if you want to take a class, I am doing a wonderful class on amulets, um, talismans, sigils, and symbols, and things that you can use, a magical spell crafting class on Tuesday at University Magicus. Very affordable, very fun. We sit in their little green screens and on the Zoom screen and, and work together. Very intimate, fun. Universitymagicus.com or you can get to it from, you know, all my social media. And that's it. I am not going anywhere. So Wednesday, you're going to watch the Witches Movie Coven. It's one of my new absolute favorite things. I am there with Heather Green, who wrote the ultimate book on witches and movies, Jason Mankey. And we bring in Richard Leal Lillard. We bring in Courtney Buckley. We bring in Black Phillip, which is our mascot for the Witches Movie Coven. It is beautiful. You can wrap up in blankies with us, bring your popcorn. It is live. So you can actually participate on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. Just we're talking about movies. We're going to go on to Harry Potter number two this week, Wednesday at six o'clock Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern and wherever else in the middle. Um, join us for the Witches Movie Coven. Fun, light, all thing witches, all thing movies, a little bit of TV, and of course. Black, 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 Philip. Watch movies deliciously. That's our new motto. And speaking of merch, we have some great merch now. Uh, if you go to Mystery Control, you can buy Patty Negri things, Witching Hour things, and of course, Witches Movie Coven things. Everything from me, Black Philip, and lots and lots of Willow. And I'm here for this next month or so, but now is the time to book the Dark Water Cruise. What? Yes, dark water cruise. I'm going to go on a paranormal cruise of the Caribbean or Caribbean or Caribbean or Caribbean. I'm going on a Caribbean cruise of the Caribbean, a paranormal cruise with sponsored by Paraflix, with my partner, Natalie Jones, with the Wraith Chasers, all sorts of fabulous, spooky, paranormal people. So let's take to the high seas and go to the Caribbean. So you can get that information on my website, on my social media. It's dark water cruise. And of course, my classes go to universitymagicus.com. Besides me, I usually teach on Tuesdays, but we have 20 other amazing teachers of all different paths and faiths, but we all teach magic and possibility and empowerment and love. I'd love to see you on my Zoom screen. Anyway, I am rambling today because it's the rambling season, but I'm home and I'm going to go pet my puppy. So where's Patty? I'm home right here with you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Guess what time it is? Yep. Yep. It's Patty tried to hold something on her lap time. No, it is time for the Willow part, but not just the Willow report today. It is the Willow and Grace report. I found the kitten. And not only is it just the Willow and Grace report, who's very sleepy, we've included Black Phillip. You heard me talk a lot about Black Phillip lately on our Witches Movie Coven. Um, so we brought him into the mix as well. This, I just want to show you how big this little baby's getting at six months old. Little Gray, she's very good, ready for her first holiday and her first holiday tree, which we're going to go get maybe today, and we'll see if she climbs it immediately or waits an hour. And Willow, again, another one of her holiday dresses. This is her little Swedish dress. Isn't that cute? It's from the movie Wiener Dogs International. She likes this one. It gives her a nice girly figure. Um, but I hope you're dressing your babies for the holidays because... Because you can, and it's like time to be silly and fun, so be silly and fun. What do you think about that, Willow? 
She's just glad mom is home. She hardly lets me out of her sight since I've been traveling. Let's fix that a little bit. So anyway, why I brought, oh, is it time for the yawn? Is it time for the yawn? No, not on cue. So besides her pretty holiday dress, we're going to talk about all her stuffed toys. She literally probably has 200 stuffed animals from little tiny ones that the kitten has pretty much taken over to great big ones or 10 times her size that she drags around the house. She has never ever once hurt or destroyed one of her toys of any kind, especially her, her plush toys, her stuffed toys, my dolls. She's just perfect little princess. All of a sudden, I got Black Phillip, the mascot of the Witch's Movie Coven. And how I show him often how his eyes, one goes sideways, one goes up and down. He wasn't born that way. That's not his psychic, magical state of being. No, that's some little dog who ate his eyes off. The one stuffed animal she's not supposed to have, the one stuffed animal that she wanted and took off my bed is the one stuffed animal she tried to destroy. Yep, she ate his eye off completely. And now it's glued back on by my husband who does everything sideways or crooked. And it's got super glue everywhere. But it, she's not taking responsibility, but we know it was her. Willow, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Nope, she won't do it. Because she knows she destroyed, in a good way, Black Phillip. But, <laughs> but you do have to be careful. Around the holidays, since this is holidays, stuff, dog, she could have been hurt by eating that little glass eyeball. She could have swallowed it or at least had a really uncomfortable stomach for a few days. So watch the decorations. Watch if you do tinsel on the tree. That's not good for pets. So besides the fact that this is a tale of woe of Black Phillip, and the witch's movie coven, and one naughty dachshund. Be careful that they can't get a hold of stuff that you have out at the holidays you don't have any other time of the year. Because you don't want them to eat stuff that they're not supposed to eat, do we? No, we don't. We've lost your sister. We've lost Grace. Maybe because she just needs another new outfit. Anyway, we just wanted to tell the story of Black Phillip and the only, only plush she has ever eaten, destroyed, or messed with. The power of the movie, the power of Black Phillip, the power of a dachshund named Willow. <laughs> That's the Willow report. Oh, are you going to get a kiss? Do I get a kiss? Someday you guys are going to see her wild and woolly. I always wake her up for this. Happy holidays, baby. <laughs> for our magic lesson this week, I'm going to talk about my favorite Greek god. Yes, Hecate, 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 Caribbean, Caribbean, potato, potato. But she is actually my favorite Greek goddess. And we are talking Greek gods today with Jason and Andrea. So <sighs> Hecate, she is actually known as the witch's goddess. She's a powerful, beautiful, feminine. Um, she is the ancient Greek goddess of magic of witchcraft, of the night, of moon, of ghosts, and of spirits, of necromancy, which means talking to the dead, which I've been doing always. So maybe it's time to look into Hecate if you don't know her. Um, you see a lot of people wearing keys, the keys of Hecate and her hounds, her beautiful dogs. She shows the strong and powerful feminine that we need so much in this world. Um, she's the queen of spell working. She's the triple faced goddess. Often you see her in her forms with her beautiful dogs. She's got the pillars. She is the goddess of the crossroads and the crossroads are what's powerful. Those of you who know my dragon thing, those are crossroads beasts. Hecate or Hecate is the goddess of the crossroads. So she helps you keep away evil spirits. She is strong. She's a great person to either add to your deities you work with, or even just the attributes. If you don't directly work with the deities, add a little keys of strong, powerful, feminine into your life. Boys can do it too. I promise. So anyway, simple magic today, but check her out. Um, I can go into the whole history. She's the daughter of Demeter and Persephone, her daughter in the underworld and the torch. That's the mythology that goes with it. Powerful, beautiful, crossroads woman who does magic. 
and witchcraft and spell works and talks to dead people. Who else would be my goddess? <laughs> That's your magic lesson for today. Hi, everybody. This is Patty Negri. Welcome to the witching hour. Yes, the witching hour, that hour of the day when the veil is thin and magic happens. I don't just have one amazing guest for you today. No, no. I have two amazing guests for you today. One you may recognize from both this show, my friend Jason Mankey, and from our Witches Movie Coven, our new show on Wednesdays. And also, I want to introduce you to Astrea Taylor. They together have this beautiful new book just out called Modern Witchcraft with the Greek Gods. I can't wait to read it. I have to tell you before I even introduce you, the first subject I ever liked, the first report I ever got an A on in grade school was about the Greek Gods. It's the only one I remember. I think it's probably in my mom's house somewhere, my little report about it. The first time I ever liked school in my life was I did a report on this. So I can't wait to read it. So anyway, how'd this come about? What is this? Well, you know, you tell it the best. Okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> well, um, one of my first conversations with Jason is meeting him at Pagan Spirit Gathering in 2017. And we were both lamenting the fact that there wasn't really a great book about all of the Greek gods and their myths and their histories and magical practices you could do with them that was written by pagans for pagans. So he actually said, I'll write that book with you <laughs> right then and there, <laughs> the first real conversation we had. And, um, you know, three years later, the pandemic was raging and we were both free from our book contracts. And we said, what's next? And well, we could think about this. And we thought about it. We thought we'd really have to do a good job with the history and representing like the modern magical practices. So we'd have to get like modern devotees to weigh in on it. And uh, yeah, it all came together and now it's out and we're really thrilled with it. See, I don't remember this conversation. Right. So I've, I've heard it a couple of times. We've been on the road in Ohio where Australia lives talking <laughs> about the book at a couple of different bookstores and things. And maybe I was not sober that evening. I don't know. But I remember we were friends. We were friends after that. And we continued to talk for the next couple of years. And I remember the book coming up yeah. periodically. And at one point we were going to write it. And then it was like, no, I got other things to do. And then 2020, it all just sort of came together. And we had a lot of time. Yeah. So worked yeah. out well. I think it came out when it was supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Now, is this um, part of either of your paths, your cosmologies that you work? I know you said Astrea, that is a Greek name. Are you Greek? By I'm part Greek, I'm a part Bulgarian, but I have, I'm basically like a, a mutt from all over the place. <laughs> but yes, um, uh, I have a strong relationship with several of the Greek gods and uh, I just adore them. They've been a huge part of my life. So uh, you know, getting to write this and getting to know the gods better has been so amazing and profound on so many levels. Like you, Patty, one of my earliest memories of elementary schools reading books about the Greek gods. There's a book written by a French couple that's illustrated, and I think I checked that out of the library 15 or 20 times between kindergarten and second grade. And then, you know, you read the short stories about the Greek gods. My only problem was I couldn't say any of their names. So I've always thought it was funny that Persephone was Persephone in my head. Because <laughs> it has phone at the end of it, right? I mean, it makes sense. Persephone. I had no idea how to say those. So, yeah, I love it. always loved the Greek gods. And I've always felt especially close to some of them. Pan and Dionysus and Aphrodite really sort of stick out. So this was, for me, a labor of love. It was a labor of love for Australia, too, I think. And kind of a devotional act because we're close to a lot of these deities. That is beautiful. Well, yeah, your your handle is Pan, right? Pan Monkey. So right. there you go. So that has to be in there somewhere. So how is this something? So when people get this, so whether they're practicing pagan or a witch or whatever path they want to call, is there stuff in here like, okay, add this to your practice, work with this deity, work with this yeah. And I feel like it's a complete book in that respect, because really, when you want to work with the deity, it's proper to learn some of their history, learn some of how they were celebrated, learn some of their myths, see what you relate to, what draws you in more and do additional research. It's kind of a stepping off point there. I think we provide a lot of historical 
facts and uh, uh, some interpretations so people can really go wherever they want. And then there are the magical practice suggestions in the book as well, whether it's a ritual, a spell, creating an amulet. You know, a lot of the uh, magical practices were inspired by things that were the, the actual Greeks were doing back then, but also modern practices too that would look really familiar to any practitioner. One of the great things about writing a book with someone else is they always will have different strengths than you do and they bring different things to the table. So I really love writing ritual. That's my favorite kind of thing to write. So when I put together an activity with the Greek gods, it's usually a ritual. And for some people, that's probably great. But there are probably a lot of people who don't like to do rituals. Estrella really writes fantastic spells, really great spells. So that's how she chose to interact with the Greek gods through spell work. So if you like one thing that it's there, and if you like another thing, it's there. So it kind of covers all the bases. That is beautiful. So do you, have you, I know Jason, you have lots of books out there. Do, do you, have you worked with somebody before work doing a book together like this? I wrote, I wrote The Witch's Altar with Laura Tempest Zakroff, who wrote Sigil Witchery. And that was a really good experience, which sort of opened me up for writing books with others. And then the Witch's Book of Spellcraft, which came, which came out in March of just this year, I wrote with some members of my coven. But they weren't professional writers, like Stray is a professional writer. This is her third book for Llewellyn. Tempest has written a bunch of books. So when I was writing with my coven members, a lot of it was they would give me ideas and suggestions, and I would turn them into finished spells and things and put their ideas in the book. But with Estrella and, then, and Tempest, you know, great writers. You don't have to touch anything that they write. You know, they do their section. I do my section. Yeah. I love writing books with other people. I think it's really fun. Oh, cool. Cool. I love that. So again, that this was kind of like a, a post or a pandemic baby. It, is there any suggestions that you guys have for either rituals or spells that we could add somebody, again, whatever their particular specific path is, that would really help in this kind of crazy day and age we all agree on we're living in? Is there anything specific using the Greek pantheon? I made a conscious effort not to really reference the pandemic and wanted to take references to it out just because I thought it might date the book. And also none of us want to relive those <laughs> that year. Right. So I didn't want anybody like, Oh, I'm reading this book and now I'm all bummed out because I have to relive most of 2020 <laughs> in my brain. Well, I would suggest the Dionysus ritual that Jason or that I, I guess the one, you had, uh, no, yeah. I must have written it. Yeah, you must have written yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's about wine. It's about celebration. It's also about taking yourself outside of your normal everyday life and just enjoying life, having an ecstatic experience, experiencing something larger than yourself, experiencing joy, transcendence, dancing, music, alcohol, if you like alcohol. <laughs> so um, I think that's an important thing. That was an important part of ancient Greek life because they had plagues too, and they had to stay in the house. They had to avoid other people. They had to go to the countryside and, you know, keep away from people. So, I mean, that's how they uh, dealt with that kind of stuff. So that's what I would suggest. Dancing and alcohol. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so socially distanced dancing and alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect for our next pandemic. Loud music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and I didn't mean like you were going to 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 reference a pandemic, but just now yeah. that people are coming out of their shells or coming outside again, um, you know, and a, there's a lot of people kind of renewing their thought process, their even their practices, their belief systems. So I like what you said, Australia, about, you know, they had this kind of stuff too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I often think there's not a whole lot that's new, right? I mean, people have had the same problems for millennia, right? The Greeks had, you know, issues, the same kind of issues that we have. And the gods represent those kind of issues. And you can see, you can draw strength from them for whatever situation that you're in, provided you have relationships with them, I guess. Yeah, or create relationships with them. Um, I think, I, again, so excited to read it. So if you had to pick out a favorite I was a favorite either ritual or deity. I'm just looking through this for the first time. So excuse me. I keep looking down going, Ooh, a pomegranate anniversary breath. So if you, Australia, if you said, okay, pick up my book. And for two minutes, I want you to see why you want to read this book. Do you have a favorite section or um, deity or ritual? Or 
One of the things that came about was I developed this closer bond with Medusa. And of course, a lot of people love her and they don't know why. And I really wanted to do history to or justice to her history and what happened and how she evolved over the years. There is a spell in there um, that evokes her smile that kind of makes people freeze in their place, you know, petrifies them that it came about later on. But yeah, um, so it's when somebody tells you to smile why don't you smile oh, <laughs> you know and you just it's not someone you know they just want you to look nicer and not just be like mm, <laughs> normal face, you know then you know you can kind of bring out medusa's fangs and her uh, gorgon eyes and staring eyes and <laughs> mm-hmm. um, just bring about that kind of a bold face so it's not giving them what they want but it's bringing up your power it's not taking away your power in that respect so it's called the Gorgon Medusa smile spell. <laughs> okay, you guys check it out. I love, I love it. And yes, and I do know people love Medusa, and yeah. they don't know why. You're, it's funny about that. Yeah, and I mean, there are so many reasons why you would love her. Like she's just a powerful goddess, and I mean, the people try to say that she wasn't a goddess; she was mortal. But really, what we see is that she is alive and dead at the same time. She's, you know, throughout the myth. And that's probably how she was honored in ancient Greece as well in initiation rituals. Beautiful. Jason, do you have a favorite section or most influential to you or what you would suggest to somebody else? It's really hard because, you know, I think about it and there are so many different parts that I loved about the book and writing the book. Every book that you write is a journey. You know, some of the journeys are more fun than others. This was just such a great distraction (laughs) during the pandemic to learn about the gods, to find out things that I'd never knew before. You know, like we have these ideas of the gods that really come from mythology sometimes. And the gods were not necessarily worshipped in the same way that their mythology might suggest. Mm -hmm. Like Hera is one of my favorites post book, because if you read her mythology, all she seems to want to do is punish the illegitimate children of Zeus. It's not Mm -hmm. very flattering. It's like, I'm mad at my husband. So you know what? I'm going to torture you for your entire mortal life. And you're like, why would anyone ever worship her? And then you read about her place in Greek society and how people loved her and worshiped her and honored her. And Hercules, Heracles in Greek, who was probably in myth, the person who suffered the most because of Medusa, not Medusa, but because of Hera, his name means like servant of Hera. And, at one point, they must have been much closer in myth, and then things kind of got changed. So I, I want people to like read the bits of history about the gods with an open mind and see maybe how different the gods are from the myths that they grew up reading. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful. I do see, again, you, go, you certainly go through gods and gods and gods and other major deities and then popular Greek gods and um, other notables. And then you do have a lot and lot of guest passages. That's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. So these are people that are p- fellow practitioners or experts in the area. Yeah, you would recognize some of the names from like the Patheos Pagan pages and um, other places. Some of them are authors uh, in their own right. But we really wanted to get an intimate perspective from somebody who knew this deity better than we did. So we put out a call to all of our friends and they passed it on. And eventually we collected enough passages. I think we had 22 passage authors. And so... um, it's it gives um more depth to the material because they know what kind of offerings they like they know what kind of time of the year they show up more often so it provides the information i think feel like that gives more authenticity to the book than if we had just been like probably october you know (laughs) right um yeah 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 we have relationships with some of the greek gods but not all of them there's so many so instead of just pretending that i have a relationship with apollo Why not find somebody who worships Apollo and works with Apollo and honors Apollo? And so that was sort of our thinking. And we also wanted to make sure that we put the gods in a contemporary setting, right? Like, let's not quote someone from 2000 years ago about how they worked with the gods. Let's find somebody who does it right now. And so it kind of illustrates to people how these gods are in 2022. 
which I love it to us. Yeah, mm -hmm. modern witchcraft with the Greek gods, not <laughs> old crotchety witchcraft with the Greek gods. <laughs> so right now, as we're going into the holiday season, Yule, Christmas, whatever, is is there a certain way that the Greeks did this different than others, or do they follow a basic wheel of the year, or? You know, we don't really know necessarily when all the Greek holidays were because they had a lunar calendar. So their holidays really shifted. There's an appendix in the back about some of the holidays, but we really don't know as much about them as we would like. You know, the Greeks obviously had a written language when they were, you know, the gods were at the height of their powers in classical Greece, but they didn't necessarily always write a ton about the holidays when they were and how they celebrated. Certainly though, some of the trappings of Christmas um, you can see in the Roman Saturnalia, which was influenced by Greek things that were going on at the time, too. So, you know, de decorating with holly and evergreens and giving presents, that all goes back to the time that the Greek gods were dominant in society. You know, to me, especially, I've, you know, I've written a Yule book. I love this time of year more than any other. I'm the one witch who wants Yule more than Christmas, more than Halloween and Samhain. And one of the things about modern Yuletide is the ghost of Christmas present to me has always been Dionysus. Like this is his time of year. And there was an ancient celebration of Dionysus on December 25th. It probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with Christmas, but if you have wine with Christmas or several shots of whiskey, you're honoring Dionysus like he would have been on that day a long time ago. Oh, that's awesome. Let's honor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm sorry. I keep going into here. And again, you do have beautiful rituals and spells. I'm just looking one, um, a spell jar for wealth. So you're putting a Greek spin on that. That is one of yours. I take it, Andrea, since you're the spell girl. Yeah. Um, oak leaves. See, I would, in acorns, I wouldn't think to put those into a, so this is good. I'm so excited to read this. One of the best um, parts it was testing all these spells, you know, like finding the oak leaves that had fallen after a thunderstorm for, you know, Zeus, you know, his influence was upon them and then mixing them with my money and then putting it and testing it out. And like, does this work? Okay. Yes, it works. And um, it's, it's pretty cool the way that it all came about, but testing spells is one of my favorite things about writing a book. Oh, that's like beautiful. Testing the rituals. Um, there's one ritual in this book that changed how the book was laid out. So I think in the original versions, it doesn't have like it wasn't going to have our name about who did the history and who did the spell or the ritual. And I've written a, nine books in the last week, six or seven years. So I've written a lot of stuff and it's hard to continually find new ideas. So I was supposed to write the activity with the Greek god Pan. And Pan is a god of a self-pleasure and masturbation. So I wrote a <laughs> masturbation ritual for Pan. And that's the moment when Australia is like, nope, everybody's name's got to go on each part. I don't want anybody <laughs> confusing me with this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, oh, I love that. So you, masturbation ritual right here. By <laughs> yeah, you, can, I mean, you can see more of it on my OnlyFans uh, page if you, if you want to. No. Oh, um, all right. Well, I do highly recommend this. I cannot wait to actually read it. And then I could ask you even smarter questions down the line. Um, but where can people get this beautiful book? Well, um, one of the best places is your local indie bookstore, your witch store, you know. Uh, it can also be found at Barnes and Noble, Llewellyn.com. I heard Amazon's out of it. They keep getting a little bit more and selling out really fast. So we recommend definitely shopping locally to you. Um, if you want a signed copy, you can go to my website, uh, estreyataylor.com. And uh, I, I will have a few signed copies by both of us. So snatch those up. You know, I'll ship them every day before the holiday comes here. So get those out into the mail if you want to give those as gifts. I have none. I have none left. It's all. It's all gone. Candy <laughs> saying shooting blanks. It's all. It's all done. I have one. It's a nice, big, solid, heavy book, so it must be smart. <laughs> That's um, what we hope people think, I guess. Yeah, we have a lot of footnotes and bibliography. That was took. That took up a lot of room, I think. <laughs> With the, you know, it's tough too because you're writing a book and there's a lot of history in it, and sometimes that can 
scare people. Like they don't want to read a history book because it sounds like homework. Yeah, and then they can just skip to the magical practices section or the devotion section that, you know, the personal insights with the, you know, Hecate or. Whatever. But I, I think the history sections came across really well though, because they're not, we're, you know, we're not academics. It's not written in a stuffy style. It's about, you know, here's how this God goddess was worshiped in the ancient world. And, you know, here's what people thought of her. And then here's how she evolves over time because the gods just don't stay the same way. And, you know, you also have with the Greek gods, you have their Roman equivalents too. And mm -hmm. you have to talk about that. And then sometimes you have to talk about how they've been worshiped and honored in the modern age. I mean, a goddess like Hecate wasn't super, super popular in the ancient world. And yet- She wasn't written about a lot. So. Yeah, she certainly wasn't written about a lot. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the modern witchcraft world, there are more books de dedicated solely to her than any other goddess that I'm aware of. So the evolution is really fun to trace and you can kind of see how the gods change over time. Yeah, and you're kind of highlighting one of the uh, parts that kind of gave us some pause because because uh, most of the records came from Athens and Sparta, we didn't have a lot of stuff from the country or stuff written by women. Or it was This is written by literate people too, so you have some of that divide and um, so we kind of had to make some educated guesses or we used another scholar's educated guess to kind of formulate the history of those deities like Hikate, especially. Yeah. I mean, um, we're lucky with a lot of archaeology, like, you know, a lot of remains of things, vases, temples and stuff, you know, more so than a lot of the other gods. I know a lot of people love Celtic deities and I love a lot of Celtic deities, but we know a lot less about them. I mean, because the Celts, who worship these deities didn't really write anything down. And when we finally do get myths written down, it's centuries after conversion to Christianity. So one of the coolest things about the Greek gods is we still have stuff that pagans wrote about their gods mm -hmm. and how they honored them and, you know, put them in plays, did art with them. And, you know, so they're very alive in that sense. That makes sense. It wasn't Christianized like all the, all the Celtic stuff was that's, that's pretty great. And it is not a scary big book. It's a good book. It, it, it is not overwhelming because you could go right. This was, looks like a good book to pick up today. What should I do today? Oh, Hestia. Yeah. You know, it looks like one of those bibliomancy books, sort of, yeah. which I don't say that often. Like, okay, let's go to whatever. I yeah, like it. It's fun to skip around into, you know, like, oh, I'm going to skip this deity, you know, I'll come back to it maybe. But yeah. yeah. What, what's singing most importantly to you right now? And that's what you can look up. Yeah. And you don't have to read like the first third of it to understand the second, you know, two thirds of it, you know, or right. whatever. Pick it up in the middle. Yeah. Skip so what are, you so um, you guys, you got to get it. It's amazing. Not scary, big, beautiful mm -hmm. book. Aha! And get it for the holidays, whatever holidays you do. So why are you guys together right now? You don't live in the same state. You don't, are you are doing an event right now or something? Yeah, we're doing a book tour. We just finished it up. We were at Witch Lab in Columbus and the Buckland Museum here in Cleveland. And we're wrapping up the tour. And uh, we we've reached the number one spot in the new releases for paganism. So we were really happy about all that. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a great couple of days for us since it came out. It's so cold here though, as yeah. a person who's lived in California <laughs> for a while now, it's, it's, it's like terrible. It's like a hellscape to me and it's not even really below freezing, but I've become so soft. You get very thin blood in California. Mm -hmm. I know I'm very yeah. thin blood. We just do yeah. But number one, you guys, that's huge in a few days. So, so everybody check it out. And where can people find each of you, again, the book together and, and separately? Um, I'm online, uh, astrayataylor.com is the website, and then uh, Instagram at astrayataylor. Uh, I go on Facebook maybe once a week, but I have an author that page there that people can access, and I, I update it sometimes too. Uh, my website is panmanky.com. I don't really update it very often, but I'm on all the social medias. Usually at panmanky is the easiest one, but if you just Google the name, it's all right there. It's easy to find. Just look for the golden locks. And, and then, then we have a lot of uh, cool events coming up next year too. So check out our web pages for that if you want to catch up with us. 
Okay. I Not highly like recommend Patty touring schedule, but we're doing a lot. Of <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. I wouldn't put that on anybody except me. I, I don't I'm know how you do it. I, I get tired hearing about it. You know, like, <laughs> I was in um, New York, and now I'm in Australia, and you know. It's like, uh, but, but see, I'm already envious. Like you guys are in Ohio, and I'm home. Even if it's cold, you're somewhere. <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys, thank you so much. So. I can't re this is my joy of education for the first time ever. I how weird that is that again that me learning about Greek gods and that there really is a book now. I have never seen one that being as this is my thing. So I'm so excited to read it. So everybody out there, witching hour folks, get this book. Wherever you do, local stores, um, Barnes and Noble through Llewellyn. Um but just get it. I think it's going to be a great lead into uh, the new year with the Greeks. Um, so thank you guys so much. Also, Wednesdays, you like Jason and his pretty hair. He's the pretty one in the family with the hair. <laughs> Come to the Witches Movie Coven every Ooh. Wednesday live on Facebook and on YouTube. Black Phillip, watch movies deliciously. With We're like us. a Black Phillip cult now. We are a Black Phillip cult. cult. But That's nobody has eyes like my black Philip. They go the wrong way because I'm married to a drummer, so they just go the wrong way. Um, but yeah, that's Wednesdays live at six o'clock on Pacific, nine nine p.m. Eastern, and you will see Jason and his pretty locks and all of our black Phillips. We all have one now, um, and now we have merch to go with it. But back to you guys. You guys, beautiful Llewellyn book, Andrea and Jason. You guys look very cute there. So keep on writing. And thank you for visiting the Witching Hour. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Love you. See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday.